I'm Candace. I'm Simon. Uh, we have been converting this van since start of COVID. Myself for about eight months on my own, and then he came back over from the UK and helped finish it off. Finished yeah. it off. Did a little bit, but finished it off. The kitchen is one of our favorite spots. We both like to cook a lot, so it was a good priority for us to have a three burner. Oven was a bonus. We got this for free. Um, and then having a multitude of storage because Simon likes to eat a lot. <laughs> He's always hungry. Um, so when we started, we wanted to have like a fixed sink. We wanted a decent sized fridge, good working space, lots of storage. Um, so that's kind of the, the idea going into the kitchen. Um, I got a lot of stuff, either free, secondhand, reclaimed. The floors were free off Facebook Marketplace, which was amazing. Um, we got a very good deal on our fridge from an RV guy, and I went ahead and flipped the exterior of it inside out and then stained it to match all the, the dark cabinets here. And then we built some little storage spaces. So we've got like our cleaning supplies here. We've got our toothbrush, like hygiene stuff, a few spices, but we are currently getting them all sorted out into little containers so that we can have them up like the top ones there. We have our little upper cupboards of storage. So we've got kind of like miscellaneous stuff here, um, like some camera lenses, label maker, um, we've got our glasses, um, and then we've got our little like miscellaneous um, like seasonings and booze cupboard. So we've got a, a large undermount propane tank that came with the van, and that's about nine kilos. So it's pretty hefty. So we've got the fridge hooked up to it. We've got the stove hooked up to it. And then we also have our um, water heater, which is out back hooked up to it as well. So we just try and kind of save the propane for when we need it, like for cooking in the fridge. And then we try and to use as much free solar electricity as we can. We've got our little switches here. So we've got the lights for the, the main space. So the bedroom, the kitchen, the bathroom. Um, we've got our shower pump from the back and then we've got our water pump for the front here. So we just turn it on and then it comes through pretty quick. Just turn it back off. And that's about it. Under here is just mostly storage. So bin, compost, recycling, a little bit of cleaning supplies. Under here is mostly pots and pans. And then we've got like our food stuff, plates and what have you right there. And then our little bins that we use for going to bulk barns so that we try and keep um, the amount of waste from bags and what have you to a minimum. So we try and make a trip out to there every few weeks to stock up on our, our little things like coconuts and rice, things like that. Um, so this is our, our fridge. Um, we got a massive discount because um, it's really hard to find a secondhand like propane or three-way or two-way fridge, um, especially here in Canada. And then to buy them new is horrendously expensive, as I'm sure many people know. Um, he literally couldn't find the knobs for these because it's a bit of an older thing. Um, and he was originally going to sell it to us for like 550 but we got it for 300 because he literally couldn't find the knobs. So we just use like pliers and, and it worked fine. <laughs> um, like I said before, I took this out because it was really dated, like 80s, 90s, very orangey looking wood. So I took it out thinking I could paint it, but because it's a very thin piece of wood that they kind of shellacked the front side, flipped over, stained it and sealed it so it matches our drawers. So this is great because we like having a big fridge. We like having, it has a little small freezer as well, which is great. And yeah, we have it all vented out properly in the back with a little fan. Um, during the heat wave, this 
bad boy was struggling a little bit. Um, so we got a fan to just kind of help push all the hot air out from there. Um, yeah, it's about, I don't know, somewhere between 60 and 90 liters, I'm assuming. I'm not entirely sure, but it's an old Dometic, so it's pretty good for what it is. We run it on propane, but it can run off to 120. Um, but we just choose to run it off propane and just have the 120 there for keeping the pilot light lit up. Um, we got into it in Australia, actually, and kind of had our first taste of van life in a very tiny um, Mazda E2000. Which is the same as a the Ford Econoline. Yeah, Ford Econoline. So, yeah. so a very small yellow van mm. and we fell in love with it. And with coming to Canada, I knew it would have to be a little bit bigger because I'm a makeup artist and I knew that I would need a space to maybe potentially do clients that had like a proper toilet just in case, you know, like basic amenities that most studios would have and we wanted something just a little bit bigger. Another thing was Simon wanted to be able to stand in it without <laughs> having to hunch over it all. So um, at the start of the pandemic, when we came back to our home countries from Australia, Simon went to the UK and I went back here to Canada. And I started looking for like cube van, box van, sprinter vans, and just this one happened to be owned by a friend of my dad's. He was using it for storage after he um, switched out what kind of work he was doing. And it was just sitting there for about eight years and we got it real cheap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can see why now, because the engine has <laughs> the brake seized at one point down the road. Um, and then the oil line blew, and then I just changed the steering pump the other day. Yeah. Um, and it gets through fuel like a fish. <laughs> Drinks like a fish. Drinks like it a fish. It does about 14, 14 to 15-ish miles to gallon. Okay, so this is our living room. It is also our spare bedroom. It's also our shower. So it's a little bit of a mixed pot here. Um, we have the space because we wanted like lounge area. We didn't want just like two seats with like a table in between. I'm a big comfort person. So I like having a spot I can like read or just kind of curl up and watch some Netflix or what have you. Um, that isn't necessarily the bed area because I'm one of these people that I feel like the bed area should be for sleeping and then you should have an area to be able to do other things. So this is a spot that I kind of was really excited about. Um, we have this so it pulls out into kind of a slightly shorter double bed. Um, and then that means we can also have company over if we have the odd person who wants to come and visit. Uh, we also have um, the little leg here that lifts up and then this pulls out. Um, that works good as a little coffee table. It also works great when we have our, it set up to shower so we can put our towels and our shampoos and stuff on there. And then this also is my little storage cubby for kind of getting ready stuff and a little bit of odd storage. Um, we also have our kitchen table, which is on rails, so it's a big long table. This is where Simon also um, does his work from because he's a 3D artist and so this is like his office as well. Um, and this is a uh, just reclaimed um, pool bench lid and then we just made it to fit the space. Um, for us to use as a table. I like the idea of having it made out of metal because um, originally when I was building the van, I really liked it when I stripped everything out and it was just the aluminum like exterior and I kind of liked how the light was reflecting. So I liked having the little elements of like either steel or aluminum or just kind of reflective metals in here so that we can kind of bounce a bit more light and it feels a bit more open, a little bit bigger. So one of my favorite parts of the van actually is the ceiling because it took me forever to, to um, get it to look like this. I've had a couple goals. I wanted a very weathered look to the ceiling um, and 
I did not enjoy the like like the pre-made pots that you buy. It almost turned out purple, which wasn't a good look for the space. So I spent a few days um, tea staining these. So it's like a mixture of like a really strong black tea you painted on the wood. And then you do a mixture of white vinegar and steel wool. And then you go and paint that on over top. And it gives you this kind of look to the wood, which was what I really loved. And then I hand waxed everything. So that was a labor of love, the ceiling, because it took me so long to do. And then my mom helped me put it up because at that point, Simon wasn't here yet. So she gave me a hand. So shout out to my mom. Um, for helping me put the ceiling up because my arms were dead after like an hour. <laughs> Simon hates this. So this turns into a shower and Simon actually really wants to change this particular feature in the van because he wants something that's just kind of ready to go, kind of a step in shower toilet combo. I personally liked it because one big thing that I love is baths and I wanted a tub in the van, which seems silly because you know, the amount of water that you need for a bathtub is, is ridiculous, but we use it anyway. So we just kind of move the cushions over. So whether we put it in the front or put it on the bed, just move these bad boys over. Um, we've got this. So we usually just leave that rested like this. Uh, the tub itself is actually like a trough that I got off a like a cattle farm <laughs> um, that they usually fill like with water or what have you and then Simon built the ledge around it um, out of steel yeah out of steel and then welded it and got it on there so it's all watertight and works really well we also have the corrugated steel for our shower wall in that area um, once we get this all out we also have a shower curtain so we, we have these hooks up here, which we attach the shower curtain to. That is our shower head, which I just have like a waterproof, like head wrap thing to go over it. Just in case it leaks, it doesn't go on the couch, but this is more or less our shower area. Um, the hot water is in the back and we just make sure that we turn the propane onto that, flick the switch, and then it runs through here rather than going through the kitchen tap. So this is the bedroom of our van. There's too many throw pillows for Simon's taste, but I love them, so we're keeping them. This area has gone through a few transitions just because we were trying to find, as we live in it, um, what works best for the space. Um, originally, we had the end area here a little bit higher, but Simon's 6'3", and that was annoying his feet comfort. So we, we, he actually lowered it so that he could lay out flat. So this is only a double bed or a full bed, whichever um, is your preference for the term. Um, we probably should have gone for a queen because we have the space for it, but that's another point for another time. Um, this is one of my favorite areas. It's really really comfy we made a, a choice to invest in a good mattress because when we were living in a van in australia it was really cheap foam it was not comfortable and you know if you're getting good sleep you're going to feel so much better about your day so that was a huge priority for us we also did um a very adult thing and got nice linens because <laughs> you know that's what adults do um they're linen they're beautiful um, and then we also have some bamboo sheets, which help with, um, kind of temperature control too, which is wonderful. Uh, one of the favorite parts of the van in the bedroom area is the skylight that I made. Um, I followed this guy on Instagram. His name is Mitch Cox and he does, did in Australia, a DIY huge skylight, which was what I was looking for because to find a skylight that was opening enough and big enough to kind of crawl out onto the roof as well as like not be horrendously expensive. They just didn't exist. It's about a grand to buy one of these skylights. So I was like trying to find a DIY way to do it without having it leak everywhere and be a horrible, horrible disaster. So we created this out of a house skylight that we 
disassembled and then made a frame for it and put hinges on it and sealed it and everything like that and it's amazing so you can stargaze at night on clear nights you we also have it so that we have a blackout curtain if we want to be in the city or if it's just a bit too bright like full moon and we're struggling to sleep so we pull that across so we can black out the curtain um, it opens so we can get up on the roof so we can chill out there or clean the sky or sorry clean the solar panels and it just brightens up the space without adding extra windows to the exterior of the van which makes it a little inconspicuous but we have far too many windows anyways so it's probably not an issue <laughs> For myself, I'm a makeup artist. I also do lash extensions. Um, the lash extensions <coughs> are what kind of tie me to the parents' house right now because I need a little bit more bigger space to actually be doing my clients. Um, but with the makeup, I'm on the road constantly for that because I'm mobile. So I'm doing weddings, I'm doing photo shoots, I'm doing um, like special events. Um, once festivals start up, I like doing body painting, glitter boosts, things like that. So the van itself lends it quite easily to that because I'm gonna be out on the road I need to carry my kid around I usually do it out of the car but it actually makes it a lot easier for us because um, normally if I had an early morning wedding I'd leave the house drive a few hours go to the wedding but now we can just kind of figure out a spot to camp nearby so it means that I don't have to get up at like five or six in the morning I can just kind of like roll out of bed, get myself ready, and I'm already fairly close to the venue, which is great. So it's actually been kind of a bonus having the van for that. Yeah, uh, I'm a digital artist and I work just work remotely uh, for a person back in England. Um, so I do that on a freelance basis. Usually sometimes, some of the months are quite quiet, some months are like five, six projects one at a time, which is good income for myself. And I've got a, um, I own a property back in England, which again is a little bit, little bit of extra income. Mm -hmm every uh, you know, bit of solid income every month. So that's good, and that keeps me going. Well, we're in the toilet. This is where the magic happens. Um, it's a two part, so we've got a standard issue Home Depot bucket for the poo, and then we've got a splitter for the front for the pee, which then goes off into our tank. Um, under the van, um, not much to really say, but we, you know, we've got our uh, compost, compost, yeah, compost peat, you know, wood chips, stuff that makes, yeah, stacks up all the all the smells. Little display shelf with all of our cleaning, clean stuff, and I don't know if that's fake or not. Is it fake, Candace? That one's a real plant. That's a real so. plant. Uh, so for my line of work, I need copious amounts of electricity and massive overheads. So we've got 800 watts on the roof of uh, two and four four times 200 watts uh, Renergy solar panels, all in series, running through the roof here into the breakers, which these are these are awful, they're from Amazon, don't buy them. Uh, comes down the wall into the solar charge control, the MPPT, MPPT controller, which is from Victron Energy. It's the 150 by 150 volt, 70 amp controller um, with a, what have we got? So we've got it going into a 80 amp breaker from recommend Ray Solars, high quality, because the ones I got from Amazon just, what well, they weren't no good. They would trip out like 30 to 40 amps and not the 80 recommend, like, at rated. Uh, that all gets pumped into a single 300 amp hour lithium ion battery from Canbat. Um, love it, it's great, you know, it just keeps going. Um, and I think we're bringing in about on a good sunny day, we bring about five kilowatts of solar a day, usually. Cloudy days, maybe a kilowatt, but we're usually you know, pumping in about 17 amps on a cloudy day. Uh, so this is, the, this is the helm, as it were. We have a, we replaced the original leather seat, which you'd all obviously had 30 years of uh, UPS man or mag, mag truck man's ass sat on it, ripping it to pieces. So we got ourselves a Honda Civic uh, seat, which we had to modify the brackets, well, a few plates on, to make it work so we have a fully fully functioning comfy seat now with proper proper supports uh, obviously unfinished uh, this is probably next next time we come back project because price of wood 
skyrocketed so and it wasn't a huge issue for us at the moment but we're definitely got, going to put a big, uh, big fan there to get the air circulating maybe a few more shelves um, yeah made a whole new front deck for shoes and just generally make it look nice nice little I guess greenhouse I think Candace wanted so hence all the plants um, we bought bought some blinds from Home Depot so when when we ask these we can have some more privacy and they just tuck they tuck down and they, they're, they're black out they're thermal so it stops a lot of lot of heat in the summer coming in and obviously stops the cold coming in during the night which is useful so this is the grey water tank they used to the reason this is cut out is because they used to, the last guy who owned it had a um a big generator on the mountain on the underside uh, that obviously found out you uh it overheated and it died so then that was so the underside's actually quite um he's managed to burn it and scorch it and melt all the metal so we had to mount this tank our dirty grey water tank further that way because all this is all melted up here um it's about a 110 i think 110 litre grey water tank which we have which then funnels to the, the sink the toilet and the shower all come into here and then we just have our uh, valve and extender pipe to then do it down a drain or whatever so we've got our water heater here which is made lovely little just a little cover for it to stop any rain getting in the top and of course the tailgate then protects the front it is a little bit dirty but it's uh hasn't failed us yet so that plums in plums right to the front uh plums, plums the cold water back from the middle of the van and then plums the hot water back and then same with the uh um same with the gas that goes to the front down and then comes to the back again just of just of how we had it wired so this is our bike storage i'm a bit of a keen cyclist so had to have had to have me bikes and then this is obviously kind of likes to wear clothes so here's all her clothes um could have made better use of the space maybe the bikes under the bed but this is this is how we did it this time um and then she has all of her makeup kit in here which then all gets strapped down obviously unfinished again you know global pandemic didn't want to waste any more money on expensive wood so that's a project for next time um yeah and then we got gave her a little fold-up mirror for herself so she can really make it a bit more homely but again we'll put some more lights in make it a bit more of a sort of walk-in wardrobe because we're fancy like that and yeah With van life, it's one of those things where it's like, there's some very hot opinions on it right now, especially coming into the pandemic where a lot of people are forced into homelessness and forced into living in their vehicles or like with the Instagram <clears throat> vibe of, you know, hashtag van life and butts on beds and all that kind of stuff and beautiful scenery. Um, it's it can it's a wonderful lifestyle i personally adore it but it's definitely like hard work and it's definitely not for everyone i have friends who are like i couldn't possibly live in the van but it's a transition if you if you're not a materialistic kind of person and yeah not part of the buying culture then it's great yeah yeah it's been a really good um transition for myself because i was one of those people who like I used to spend money as fast as I would make it and with van life it's like you you don't really have the space to accumulate a lot of stuff yeah. so you have to learn how to downsize you have to learn about what's important to you and you know it's becoming more about like meeting people and the memories and the adventures rather than the things which has been really nice um, yeah. kind of just for myself but the great thing is you never pay rent just do the upfront cost <laughs> of the van and then pay for fuel and insurance and that's yeah you save you save a lot more money in the long run is yeah. the way i look at it so i'm more on social media than simon is um so i have three different instagram <laughs> <laughs> so i have my makeup one which is candace underscore deanna underscore mua and that's for my makeup services um, I have my one for the van build and traveling, which is um, at underscore gypsy blood underscore. And then my lash one is at Candice Deanna Lashes. And that's pretty much straight across the board with Instagram and with Facebook. Um, yeah, and then Simon. I, again, like, um, don't have Instagram, don't <laughs> have Twitter. I just work for, just work for a company back in England. Um, going for a rebrand at the moment but uh, we will be called uh, strive cgi uh, and that's that's probably most that's probably all i got really yeah <laughs> i've got a few profiles on uh, like behance under simon grover but um that's about it so far so 
so yeah. 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 A little less social media. Yeah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> like... <laughs>